What I'd like to do is just turn the microphone over and uh, welcome the new head coach for the Charlotte Hornets, Steve Clifford. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking Michael, Mitch, Curtis, uh, Buzz for the opportunity to come back. Uh, this is an exciting time for this franchise, uh, a lot of talent, uh, a roster capable of doing something exceptional uh, with a fan base that I know is hungry for playoff success. So I'm anxious to be part of that, uh, ecstatic to be back, and anxious to get started, to be honest. So thank you. All right, we're going to turn things over to questions from the media members in attendance. If you have a question, uh, please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone over to you. And we'll start with Will Palachik from Sports Radio FNC. Please also identify uh, what outlet you're from. Coach Clifford, welcome back to Charlotte. In terms of what made you want to come back to this organization and this franchise, what was your thought process like in order to try and decipher your desire for this position? Uh, a, a number of things. Um, you know, one, I enjoyed the city, the fans here before. Uh, this is an owner that even when I left, uh, stayed in touch with. Uh, I feel I can work, I worked well with before, I feel good about. Um, Mitch and I have also stayed in touch. Um, I've worked for him before. I feel very comfortable with him. And when you're the coach, there's nothing more important than, you know, those two relationships. Uh, it's, a, it's a young roster with a lot of potential and um, a lot of room for growth. So, uh, again, I think there's the opportunity here to do something exceptional. And if I could follow up, anytime you part with an organization, there's always kind of those residual hard feelings. How did you reconcile those to want to come back here yeah to be honest with you um you know when i left here uh you know frankly it was time you know i'd been here five years uh we'd gone two years in a row without without making the playoffs and uh i think five years in one city in this league is is actually a pretty good run so when it happened uh I mean, I don't know if I agreed with the decision, but I totally understood, and that's that's the kind of the nature of being a coach in this league. Cliff, uh, Scott Fowler from the Charlotte Observer, welcome back. Thanks. What uh, are you a different coach than you were when we last saw you four years ago? And if so, where do you think fans will see the differences? Well, I like to think so. Um, I think as you. I'm going to phrase this the right way, Mitch. As you get older, you know, um, I think the one thing that you learn is what doesn't change about your life is, you know, you want to evolve and get better at what you do. So I've coached a lot more games uh, than I had when I was here. Uh, I worked with another management team that I enjoyed doing. That dynamic was different, too. I think you learn a lot from that. This league has changed greatly. Uh, the way we're playing at both ends of the floor is a lot different than I was here. Um, and the one thing I love, you know, I love the NBA game. I love to study it. Uh, and uh, so I think that, uh, I don't know if, you, if I would say dramatic, but I definitely view the game differently than I did when I was here before. And if I could follow up, uh, you will have a weapon in LaMelo Ball that's pretty unique. I wonder what style of play you're going to utilize uh, to maximize him and your other players, and, and will your style, your pace of play be any different, do you think? Yeah, well, Mitch and I have had detailed conversations about this, is we're going to play offensively, I think with a very similar emphasis uh, of, you know, like they played these past couple of years. You know, offense is so much starts with playing to the strengths of your best players. And he's a great talent uh, with a passion for the game and a flair for playing in the open court and we want to take advantage of that. Uh, we're playing quicker as a league, league-wide than we did when I was here before. 
so what we want to do is build on what was, I believe, the eighth best offense in the NBA. And if we're going to have playoff success, we don't have to just improve the defense. You know, and everybody's saying, you know, all you got to do is get better on defense. You know, we, we need to improve in all areas. So need to get to maybe top five or six in offense, improve the defense, and that'll give us a chance to win. Cliff right here, Rob, with the Charlotte Observer. Just wondering, uh, pick it back on that a little bit, just the roster overall. Look at the Honus roster. Um, what do you see in it so far and how you evaluate it kind of moving forward as you go into free agency here? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm in the very beginning stages of study. Uh, so, you know, the one thing you learn about coaching in this league is you don't guess. Uh, one of the biggest things I have to do, we, we, we've been meeting, is to put a staff together as soon as possible, to get to know the players as quickly as I can, and to spend the rest of my time watching film. Uh, when you, as a coach, the one thing you can't do in this league is guess. You know, you have to study, uh, try to become an expert on your team, and then you have a chance to put together a plan that can be successful. So uh, what I see is young, exciting team that's well put together. Uh, they fit together well. They can play a similar style. Uh, what I've seen so far that I like watching film is not just that they played up tempo, that the ball moves. The ball doesn't stick a lot. The ball hits the paint a lot. Uh, which has led to a good three-point three shooting team and a team who gets the ball at the rim a lot. And those are two key components to playing good offense in this league. Coach Mike Lissette from uh, Queen City News, if I may be so bold, how did this happen? I mean, were you always in the mix for the job? Or after the initial hire, was this as quick as it seemed to be publicly? Yeah, it was quick. <laughs> I mean, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Um, it, it was it was it was quick, you know, considering um, that we had a coach picked out, right? And uh, the coach changed his mind, and within a week, you know, we have a new coach. So it it may seem that it's very quick, but the reality is, you know, when we started the search. You know, several months ago, um, and some of this falls to me. In fact, a quite a, quite a bit of it does. Um, you know, Coach Clifford's name was discussed. You know, with myself, Buzz, and um, Michael, and Michael always defers the basketball decisions to me. Right. Uh, so, at the time. Well, let me step back a little bit, okay? Four years ago when we met and, um, you know, we made a, a reset change, right, in the organization, not only the coach, but a new general manager, new medical, new scouts, you know, it was all kind of new. And, um, you know, I did inform coach, right, that we were making a change, but we have a relationship and a couple of nights later, we went out to dinner Right, sounds a little unusual, right? You let somebody go, and then two nights later, you're you're having dinner together, right? So he asked me um, during dinner, you know, where I was going to live, and I said, well, I didn't know yet. So he said, um, I happen to have a place that I don't need anymore. So uh, I said, okay, I'll come by and take a look, right? So. I, I went by, and it's right uptown here. It's a great spot, right? So, so I took it. Um, so now, fast forward to about two months ago, right? You know, why are we here today, and why didn't this happen two or three weeks ago? Well, to be honest with you, um, when Michael and I and Buzz talked about Coach, and he kind of left up to, up to me, uh, I was afraid that he might ask for his apartment back. <laughs> so we moved on, and here it is a month and a half later, you know, we figured out a way to make it work. Yeah, it's Steve Reed from the Associated Press. Um, so was that part of the contract? Does he get it back? Or? It's not a part of the contract, <laughs> but it was a part of the negotiation. <laughs> um, Steve, I just want to ask you, 
This is the first time I think you've taken over a team that, that has a winning record. You've always taken over teams that are you know, below 500. Um, you had a team here that was 48 and 34. How does this team compare to this team? Do you feel like there's more talent on this team than, than that team? Yeah, I do. Uh, younger. You know, that, that team we had really veteran depth. That was a big strength of that team. Um, I mean, one of the things you look for is the potential for growth, you know, as you watch film. And, and uh, I think that this is a group that can get better and better, you know, which is making progress, how quickly you make progress, uh, how balanced you can become is so important in this league. And, and so that was a good team, no question about it. They played well together. But I look at this team as, like I would say, well put together. They fit well together. And they can play a style that fits into what wins in this league right now. Shiba Rojas with the Charlotte Post. Hey, oh, hey Steve. Shiba Rojas with the start, Charlotte Post. Um, so you talked about having a young team you know, that's on the, knocking on the door of being a playoff team. Is that any extra motivation for you as a coach to get the job done? Um... Yeah, I mean, I, you know, this, the NBA is all about winning in the playoffs. That's it, you know. So, uh, again, I think is there's no rule that says you have to have an average age to become mature enough or have a team game that, where they can function well enough to win in the playoffs. That speaks to how you practice, how you prepare, uh, how together you become. And, again, in the NBA, how balanced you play. You know, how good you are on offense, how good you are on defense, how well you rebound the ball. So that's, after this press conference, is what we'll start locking into. And just to follow up on that, you, um, you had a couple of top ten defenses in your first stint here. So, you know, we got the um, first-round draft pick and Mark Williams, who can be a defensive force on this team. How excited are you to have him and bring him into what you bring on the defensive side? It, very much so. And, and, you know, I had the, I had the uh, opportunity this year uh, to spend a weekend at Duke where I saw him practice, saw him play, watch him in a shoot around. And the other part I like about him is I just like his whole approach. Uh, bright, hardworking. He picked things up very quickly. And those are all traits that uh, are critical to make progress in this league. Uh, Sam Perley, Hornets.com. Cliff, welcome back. Thanks. Um, what or do you think there is a benefit of seeing a lot of these younger guys in this core here through the lens of an opposing coach the last few years? How do you think that's going to benefit you having uh, the perspective of seeing it from the other side? No, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, you know, they always say the, the old axiom in the NBA is you never know a guy until you coach him. Uh, so to be honest, I think the the biggest part of the learning process happens now when you can just sit, shut the door, watch the film, you know, and take notes and lock into, again, their strengths, their perceived weaknesses or whatever. Then no matter what about the NBA, you play a team four times in the East. I think sometimes people forget, you usually get one day of preparation. So it's not like, uh, unless you play a team in the playoffs, you're really studying, studying personnel that closely. And uh, so I think the biggest part of the learning is right now. Hey, Mitch, just wanted to make sure, just uh, after going through the process of the coaching search, what made you land on Steve? Why do you feel Steve is the guy to lead you guys forward right now? Well, this is a different team, you know, than the one he coached, you know, four years ago. It's a different time. Uh, early on in the process, you know, we leaned towards getting a coach with experience. You know, we also interviewed, you know, assistants that did not have head coaching experience. But our feeling at the time was we were leaning towards a head coach with experience. So, uh, you know, Steve certainly fits that category. Um, we knew defensively we needed to ramp it up a little bit. And, um, you know, some other areas that um, we thought needed to be improved. And, you know, uh, Coach Borrego brought us a long way in four years. 
And, uh, you know, sometimes a, a change, as Coach said earlier, you know, it's just time, right? Um, our conversations with him in the interview process, you know, about playing offensively the way we've been playing, the way our fans like to see us play, you know, uh, with great pace and a game that's fun and exciting. Um, you know, we saw the game the same way. We saw the way this team should look going forward the same way. Uh, so, and then of course, you know, I've known Coach, you know, for years now since he worked, we worked together in Los Angeles. So there was a pre-existing relationship that goes beyond even the relationship that this organization had with him. So it was a combination of factors, and um, that's that's it. That's how we got here today. I'm very comfortable that we have a really good coach. And then, Steve, you mentioned earlier about the playoffs and how it's all about winning in the NBA. Um, just how much do you embrace the pressure here? Because as you mentioned earlier, expectations are a little bit higher here now than they were when you were here previously. Well, I think that's what you want as a coach. Uh, you want to be, you, you know, you want there to be expectations both from the fan base and from within your group. And uh, it all speaks to as a coaching staff is summer study to come up with the right plan, the right plan of how we have to play. And then it's all about the work, uh, the right amount of work, the accountability of play, uh, getting everybody on the same page, uh, and then making constant progress. It won't be how good we are in October. It will be how good we can be by December, January, and make progress. That's what the best teams do. Mitch, Will Kunkel with Fox Charlotte here. Uh, what do you say to the fans on behalf of them that they feel like the process was a, a bit discombobulated? What's kind of the message and how this unfolded? Well, I'm, I'm not sure that's the right expression. Certainly there was a bump in the road, okay? Uh, we started the process immediately upon the conclusion of the season. We probably, you know, interviewed uh, 10 to 12 candidates uh, and we ended up uh, interviewing one candidate, you know, three times, right? And we thought we had the coach uh, selected a couple of weeks ago, okay? And then there's a bump in the road. So, you know, what you have to do is just you have to adjust and, you know, you have to redirect. Uh, at that time, we felt we had enough information to knowing that we were going to get a good coach. And we did have it narrowed down to a few coaches. Um, a couple of meetings with ownership, and here we are today. So, yeah, certainly I understand, you know, something unexpected happened a couple of weeks ago. That's what happens. You know, you have to be able to rebound and um, refocus and just forge ahead. And we feel we got an excellent coach. And then just to follow up on that, how confident are you to still bring back Miles with the process that's going on right now? Well, we're, we're limited by the NBA rules as you know, to how, how thoroughly I could answer that question. You know, I will say, you know, as an organization, you know, we love Miles. Okay, and, um, you know, we're, go we're going to bring him back. Um, he's been great for the franchise, and I believe with his work, I think he's only going to get better. Walker Mail from Locked On Hornets. You know, Coach, you've been around superstars before, Dwight Howard, Trace McGrady, with the Rockets quite a few times. How do you bring what you've learned with your relationships with those kinds of players, maybe apply it to a LaMelo Ball or somebody that is viewed as that here in the city of Charlotte? I mean, I, you know, sheer experience is a thing I've seen. Um, I think it also when you're around those caliber players. I mean, this past year doing a consulting thing with Brooklyn is as much as I guess players have, are different now than before, being around a guy like Kevin Durant for the year uh, just reinforced to me that the best players do want to be coached and the best players do work hard every day and the best players do care about the team. Um, Kevin was a breath of fresh air. You know, he may be the best player in the world, and nobody works harder. Nobody cares more about his teammates. Um, so things like that that, you know, certainly, uh, you know, I can share with the players. So uh, I think all those experiences, they give you perspective on what you can expect from players, and they give you 
whatever stories that you can share that hopefully will help them with clarity of their vision of how they want to work every day. And just as far as the assistant coaching staff goes, how many guys do you plan to keep from last year? What names are they, if you can share those, and how might that mix from new guys you're bringing in compared to some that were here last season? Well, we just met on that this morning. So it's, uh, I'm going to, after we get done here this afternoon, we're going to start to have meetings and, and uh, I'll become more familiar with some of the guys that were here and then we'll go from there. Scott Fowler again. I want to go back to the apartment thing for one second. <laughs> so, Mitch, did you buy it or was, was Cliff actually your landlord for the last four years? <laughs> I, I believe I just assumed the lease. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, unless he owns the building. Um, it's separate. Uh, this is a big picture question. Um, but I know you guys, you don't, as Mitch said a week or so ago, you want to make a jump from 43 wins, uh, jump. So how far away do you think this team is from winning a playoff series or in a matter of years, winning an actual championship? Either one of you. Or both, I guess. Go ahead. Yeah, it's passing me the tough question, huh? Well, you know, the last time we talked about this, you know, we won 43 games, 43 and 39. Um, we lost a lot of close games. And we went through one tough stretch, 11-game stretch. Um, I think we can be a better team, win more games. Is that 45 games, 47 games? You know, 49 games, I don't know, right? Um, certainly, I feel that we should be in contention or make the playoffs. You know, two or three years ago, that wasn't our position. You know, I think now that when we look at our team uh, and we look at the growth of the players and, of course, you know, hiring a coach that we feel can bring us to that next, that next position, um, I'd like to think that and, – and our goal here is not to get in the playoffs, right, and get the A spot or win a round. I mean, that would be wonderful, but that's certainly not our owner's goal and that's not my goal. You know, my goal is to get this franchise into a position where we can not only make the playoffs, but advance in the playoffs. And at some point, I think the Western Conf excuse me, the Eastern Conference Finals, you know, should be realistic, right? Now, a lot of that depends on health and injuries, not so much just our team, but the other teams, you know, in the conference. You know, I don't know how it's going to end up after all is said and done with trades and do the teams in our conference get better, right? We can't control that. But certainly I feel that, that we should be a better team, and you know, maybe not just a game or two more, but more than a game or two more than we were this past season. And the goal is to not only make the playoffs, but to advance. Coach Ashley Mahoney with Axios. Much of the city has changed. We've spent a lot of this conversation talking about things that you'd like to see developed on the court. What have you noticed during your time about what's changed within the city as a whole, maybe aside from the area around the neighborhood by the apartment? Yeah, I mean, I've only been here about whatever, uh, <laughs> 24, 24 hours. hours, but uh, <laughs> the Green Bohemians knew, you know, uh, I noticed that. Uh, the Dunkin' Donuts still opens at 5.30 down by the view. That's the same. And, uh, you know, that's it. I need some time to answer that one. In addition to that, during your process of the conversations around you know, taking this job, was the topic of conversation ever turned toward the proposed new practice facility across the street? No. Uh, no, this was much more, I think, basketball-related. Um, I think because of the, you know, our relationship, uh, my relationship with Michael, Buzz, uh, Curtis, I mean, we really got to it. It was a much different, not a lot of background. We didn't need that. So it was really roster-based, how we're going to play, where can we get to quickly.